With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Monday, April 25th, 2016. Results from recent testing on Flint water shows continued improvements. A press release sent out by Governor Snyder on Friday announces that the most recent round of planned Sentinel site testing shows that lead levels throughout the city are once again dropping. According to the release, this is the fifth time in a row that lead levels have decreased. However, while the overall system continues to improve, Flint water is not yet in compliance with the federal lead and copper rule. Recent test results have shown that the majority of the lead contamination is in the 48504 area in northwest Flint. However, once again, continued caution is needed for all Flint residents, including continued use of water filters and for those at risk, continued use of bottled water. Last week, the City of Flint, DEQ, and the EPA announced a flushing program paid for by the state of Michigan that asks residents to flush their water systems starting in May by turning on their bathtubs and unfiltered kitchen faucets for several minutes every day in order to assist in flushing and in coating the city's pipes. The Flint Water Crisis Committee has passed a resolution urging state lawmakers to pass $144 million in supplemented funding for the city. Gary Ridley of the Flint Journal reports that the Flint Water Interagency Coordinating Committee passed the resolution last Friday, apparently after Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha told the committee that she was growing frustrated with the speed at which help was coming to the city, saying that the state and federal government seemed to be losing a sense of urgency. State Senator Jim Ananique of Flint echoed the doctor's sentiment, saying that the people of Flint need this money now, adding that some of the money requested is aimed towards programs that need to reach children before the end of the school year. According to a Detroit News report, as of mid-March, state agencies have only spent 21% of the provided funding, which included $6 million to assist in reconnecting to the Detroit water system. And according to Ridley, the $30 million provided to Flint from the state of Michigan for Flint water customers have yet to be fully distributed by the city. Ari Adler, the governor's spokesman, says that the governor has been working closely with legislators to provide additional resources for the city of Flint, adding that the city can help with those efforts by spending the state money that has already been given to show that the money is being put to good use. Mayor Karen Weaver has announced the date for the next town hall meeting. The City of Flint published a press release scheduling the next town hall meeting for tomorrow, April 26th, from 5 to 7 at the Metropolitan Baptist Church at 930 Myrtle Avenue in Flint. Roberto Acosta of the Flint Journal reports that a schedule of topics note that the mayor will address the location of upcoming water pipe replacements, the upcoming citywide water flushing program, and the recent rash of shootings in the city. Fiat Chrysler announced this last weekend a voluntary recall on mid-sized SUVs and full-sized cars. David Muller on MLive.com reports that over 800,000 vehicles may be affected by a shifter that has been linked to 41 injuries. The company says that the recall is to reduce the effect of potential driver error by enhancing warnings and transmission shift strategy. The affected vehicles are equipped with the monostable electronic gear shift assemblies. The company notes that the injuries reported were not necessarily due to equipment failure. However, the NHTSA's Office of Defects notes that, according to testing, operation of the shifter is not intuitive, provides poor feedback to the driver, and increases the potential to select an unintended gear. North Korea allegedly tested and launched a submarine-based ballistic missile. The Associated Press reports that North Korean Foreign Minister Ri Soo-young said that his country would not be cowed by international sanctions, adding that the U.S. drove North Korea to develop such weapons as an act of self-defense. The U.S. and South Korean militaries just recently concluded their largest joint training operation that was described as being a training exercise to decapitate the leadership of the North should a nuclear attack occur. Su Young suggested to the Associated Press that suspension of such military drills could open the door to talks and reduced tensions, adding that if the U.S., the South, and North Korea continue on this path of confrontation, it will lead to a very catastrophic result. President Obama, however, rejected this offer, saying that you'll have to do better than that. The Guardian reports that the president added that until the Democratic People's Republic of Korea offers a so-called better proposal, the U.S. will continue to sell missile systems to and hold trading exercises with neighboring countries. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.